Okay, I think we are live. Let's see. We should be live and I will be connecting to Let me see where it is. Shouldn't be able to find us live. So just bear with me if you're if you're joining. We're just getting set up. And I want to make sure we've got a bit of a setup, so we're doing this remotely. It's a lot of fun. And I, okay, here we go. I found myself on Facebook, so I'm going to watch myself on Facebook. And I am also on Instagram. And so you can post comments, questions, and the like. And then I will, I'll take them as, uh, as we go along. Here we go. We have some people. We have some people watching. Can everyone? Can everyone hear me? Okay. I assume that you can. Otherwise, please write uh, a message in the in the chat, and I'll take. Um, yeah, if there's any issue, let me know. But I think we should be good, so we can get started. And yeah, if you have any questions, do write the questions. Uh, you can so you can follow this on Facebook right now. You can also follow this on Instagram with my Instagram handle, which is F Ribason. And oh, here we go. We have one of my friends joining on Instagram. And as a matter of fact, just bear with me. We'll get started in a second. Okay, great. It's recording. We are live. I've got questions coming. So. Hello to everyone on Instagram. Uh, I'm doing this live on Facebook with Just Be. So you can either follow on Facebook or on Instagram. On Facebook, it's going to be under Just Be, uh, Just Be Wellbeing Center. So any questions you have, please go ahead and let's get, uh, let's get started. Uh, so this workshop is about business tools for holistic practitioners. Uh, why, why, what's the point of doing the workshop? Well, the point of doing the workshop is I come across many, many, many times, pretty much the same issue when I meet unbelievably talented holistic practitioners, which is that their healing skills are often amazing. And the, the quality of the work they do is often mind blowing. And yet they have an issue where they live in um, in difficult conditions, they are not making as much money as they could be making or should be making. They're not helping as many people as I believe they should be helping. And it's quite ironic because most of them talk about respecting the environment, respecting themselves, respecting uh, people, but they actually respect the environment, respecting other people, but they don't respect themselves. And it, probably hear me a bit better if I do this. And I would argue that running a holistic business is about, uh, well, is about being sustainable and is about respecting yourself. So if you're not making enough money, there are a few possibilities. Either what you're offering has no real value, and that's possible, or you're not monetizing it properly. What happens quite often also is people who work in the, the well-being segment have a difficult, to put it mildly, a difficult relationship with money. Uh, the difficult relationship typically is feeling that, or having beliefs that, that limit them, feeling that money can corrupt them, that wanting money is a bad thing, that if they didn't need money, then they wouldn't be asking for money, or that the work they do should be free, and so on and so forth. These beliefs lead to a system that is not sustainable. One of the reasons why it's important for, for a holistic business to be sustainable is the following. If it actually has a positive impact on people's lives 
and you're not able to run a sustainable business, at one point you're going to give up and you're probably going to go and start well, maybe not flipping burgers at McDonald's because many holistic people don't eat meat, but flipping tofu at you know some kind of uh, some kind of vegan food joint. And if you do that, what are your clients going to do? Where are they going to go? I had this conversation with my acupuncturist some years ago, who was charging too little, and I said, "Well, the, listen, what you're doing is not sustainable from a business point of view. It's not sustainable." Now, I I understand enough about business that I can calculate how much money you're making. And I know it's it's pittance. It makes no sense. You'd be better off working at Starbucks or as a waiter somewhere. You'd earn more money and then help people in your free time. It doesn't work. And what's going to happen if you're not earning enough money is that you won't be available for me. So where will I go? Who am I going to hire to help me with acupuncture? I found one guy I really like, whom I really trust, who understands me and totally gets me. I'm paying for you to be available. I'm not paying for your time. Uh, so of course he looked at me and going like, you're the, the first client of mine who's not actually asking for, for discounts. I'm like, I don't want discounts. What I want is to pay a fair price so that you can stay in business. Actually, it's, it's quite funny. I just I was just bouncing messages with a, a music store I know in Geneva. And I remember going there one time and I asked the I asked the chap, so I was buying something, I asked for a discount. And then I caught myself, said, actually, I don't want a discount. I do not want a discount. I want to pay you a fair price so you can stay in business, so I can come and buy equipment from you. Because otherwise, what am I going to do? I'll buy it from Amazon? Like, how's that going to work? Where, if, if I have an issue, who's going to interface? Like, I'm going to have to go back to the, the distributor or Amazon or send it back? I don't want to do this. I don't know. I'm paying you money so that you stay in business so that I don't have to do all of this and I can focus on more important things in my life. So this shows you a slightly different, slightly different mindset. Uh, by the way, for everyone joining on Instagram, hi, welcome. I'm live now on the Facebook page of Just Be UAE. So you can follow us on Just Be UAE, talking about business tools for holistic practitioners. So why, why is this the case and what can we do about it? And actually, before we get into that, why is it that some holistic business owners do really well? And is there correlation? Now, doing really well can mean multiple things. It can mean financially doing really well, uh, so making a lot of money. But that isn't necessarily what people want when they uh, get into this business. Usually what they want is to help people. Now, I'd argue if you can really help people, there should be a way for you to help people and make decent money. You don't need to be driving around in a Rolls Royce to be making decent money. But if you're worried about money, you've got something wrong in your business model. This often is the case. And people usually don't like selling. That's, that's a big issue. It's something we're going to cover in, in the workshop is selling. They don't understand really what value they're adding, but also they haven't been trained. And it's really difficult, to be honest. It's really difficult to, 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 to learn all of this. I mean, a num a, the vast majority of salespeople who get paid ridiculous amounts, I've got no idea what they're doing. They're just glorified order takers. So when someone hasn't been trained for this, what are they going to do? You know, improvise? Well, it's if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. But the really good news is because it isn't easy and few people are doing it, your competition is crap in the sense your competition has got no idea what they are doing, how they should be doing it, how to monetize it, and how to run a sustainable business. And a number of the people who are running, as I put it, financially successful businesses, not all of them, but more than none, they're dishonest. And they are selling the wrong things to their customers. So as long as it works, the customers probably are very happy to be lied to. That's often an issue. People are wanting to be lied to, wanting to be sold hope, wanting to be sold lies. But the, 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 the real issue is if there's a way for you to be helping these people and you have enough people who are interested, and there's, there's value, how do you structure it? So one reason why people have difficulties with it is not knowing how. And one reason why people don't know how is a number of these tools are presented in very difficult to understand ways that are just discouraging. Like when I talk to people about 
creating a business model. I see the energy levels that just drop tremendously. And there's a huge amount of resistance and reluctance and going like, oh dear, business model, that sounds complicated. And now creating a business model is not complicated. The same with a business plan. Creating a business plan is not complicated. Doing branding. Branding is not complicated. What is complicated is finding which are the relevant questions we should be answering in order to be able to do it efficiently and sorting through all of the, let's say, inefficient questions, the unhelpful questions that people waste too much time on. And so many, so many of these business tools sound fancy when all it boils down to is the following. What you're doing, is it helping people? If it is helping people, are they willing to pay for it? If they understand the real help, if you stop helping them, does it make enough of a difference to them? And can you charge high enough prices or can you get enough people to pay for it so that you're earning a decent living? If not, keep it as a hobby. Look for something else. But don't go and suffer needlessly quitting your job, trying to make it, if on paper, if when you run the math, it seems highly, highly unlikely that you'll succeed. And why not? Because just if you have a regular job, you can do this for fun and do it as a hobby and not suffer. There's no reason for you to suffer. And if you really enjoy it, get a, you know, have a day job, keep your day job, work part time, uh, do it on weekends. If you're not passionate enough to do it on weekends, maybe you're not that passionate, passionate enough to do it. Maybe you won't want to do it full time because it's a lot of commitment. It's a lot to do. And here's another, here's another issue people have is they walk into being a business owner and a freelancer with an employee mindset. What I mean by employee mindset is the following. If somebody hires you for a job, you have a specific list of things you should be doing. You're reporting to someone and they take care of everything. And you just do your job and provided you don't goof up and provided that your boss isn't too much of an idiot and provided that the company is doing well, in principle, you, you keep your job. Of course, you'll complain and you'll moan and you'll find reasons to, to hate it, but in principle, you, you keep your job. Now, the employee mindset here typically is assuming that if I have the skill set, then business should take care of itself. That can be the case, and generally it is not the case. Well, it's not optimal. The situations where it might be the case are situations where people have, uh, it's actually industries which are symptom-based. What I mean by that is somebody somewhere in a big enough city will need your services and will realize it. That'll be the case in the hotel industry. If you live in a big enough town, Someone will come by and will look for a place to sleep and will look for available places that customers are walking through the door. If you're a dentist and you're living in a big enough community, someone at one point will have a toothache. You get the idea and so on and so forth. In all likelihood, not many people, some do, but not many people will suddenly wake up and think, oh, what I really need is some kind of service, holistic service. Some people will. They've heard about acupuncture, they want to try it. They've heard about yoga, they want to try it. Uh, whatever it might be, if they've heard about it, they might want to try it. This might be the case. If you're counting on this being the case, you'd better make sure that enough people have heard of it and they go looking for you because um, they, can't, they can't find you elsewhere. In one of the disciplines I, I, I do, which is Cosmo Energy, few people have heard of it, few people Google it, and if I just relied on people finding me because they have, uh, they've heard about Cosmo Energy, they have a need, well, I would not be having any clients. The reason why I get clients is because there's word of mouth, because I know how to market myself, uh, and because I understand that if I talk about the symptoms that I'm solving, it works far better than if I talk about how I'm solving them. As a case in point, if you have a toothache, you go and find a dentist. Can you list any of the brands of dental equipment 
I believe unless you work in the dental industry, you got no idea who makes it. We paid attention, and I've got no idea. Does Samsung make it? Maybe. Yamaha? Maybe. Uh, but I don't know any of the brands. I don't care. And I've been to the dentist multiple times, and I, I really, I really do not care. So back to the, some of the, the, the mindset questions. One of the biggest issues I see with the mindset, as I said, is having the employee mindset. The mindset people should be having is the following. It's to view a company as having a list of different needs and imagine themselves putting on different hats. So if I told you, well, let me put this differently. If I asked you to invest money in a company that was run by one person who viewed themselves as being a product and hoped that clients would walk in through the door and reality showed that they didn't have enough clients walking in through the door, possibly you wouldn't be very enthusiastic about investing the money. If I asked you to invest your time, possibly you wouldn't be very enthusiastic in investing your time in this type of company. So if you're working for yourself, why are you doing it? Why are you willing to invest your time and your money and your energy working for a company uh, which is being so so badly mismanaged because it's yours? Well, probably. That's one of the, the, the cognitive uh, fallacies, cognitive biases um, that we have, where because it's ours, we think it's okay. We think our time is expendable, even though it's our most pre precious resource. We think our energy doesn't really matter, even though it disappears quickly and it takes very difficult for it to come back. So... This, this is where taking a step back and viewing the business as a real business makes a difference. So what does it mean? Specifically, what it means is that a real business has, difficult, uh, has different roles. It can be difficult, but different roles. One of the roles is being CEO. The CEO, chief executive officer, is the person who runs the company, has a strategic vision, makes sure the company is delivering, and is answering for all of the results. So if you're a holistic business owner, you need on a regular basis to stop what you're doing, take a step back and asking, is your business on the right track? And if it isn't, what are you gonna do about it? And to what extent is your plan convincing and plausible and realistic? CEO is one of the of the uh, the roles another one is the cfo the chief financial officer if you hired someone to manage your finances the finances of the business and they reported to you exactly the results that you're dealing with would you fire them would you keep them would you promote them would you be satisfied would you ask them to answer to you so ceo cfo coo the chief organization officer, the person gets everything organized. How is that person doing? Who's creating procedures? Who's making sure that all of the, the, that everything works well behind the scenes? How about the head of human resources? Would you work for a company who gives you no paid holiday, doesn't give you a pension plan, doesn't tell you how much you're going to earn every month? Really? Doesn't know if there's going to be enough cash flow to pay you? Would you really do that? Probably not. So we've got CEO, CFO, COO, CHRO, the, the human resources officer. We've got the head of marketing. We've got the head of sales. And the head of IT. Yeah, if something goes wrong, what do you do? You take care of your phone. Do you take care of your computer? Do you set all of this up? Do you do it yourself for your website? Who's doing that? Are you outsourcing it? Who's, when you're outsourcing it, are you outsourcing the content or the strategy? Do you have a strategy? When it comes to sales, do you have a sales process? Are you allergic to selling? Do you enjoy selling? When somebody calls you to ask for your for ask your services, what do you say? How do you qualify clients? How do you disqualify clients? What about your packaging? How does that look? To what extent is your business model sustainable? Is it likely that you can earn enough money? Is it unlikely? Are you hoping it will work? If so, how has that been? How has that been working out so far? Here's here's a, a thought. It's sort of the the rule of thumb of how much people should earn. The rule of thumb is the following: You would accept to work in a an employed position 
for a certain amount of money per month. The money can the amount of money can vary depending on the organization, how much you enjoy the job. Typically, the less you enjoy the job, the more money you want to get paid because the less exciting it is. Uh, so it gives you a rule of thumb. You have a, you have a, like a, a fork of what's the minimum you'd want and how much you'd actually like. So if you're self-employed, the rule of thumb is that you ought to be earning double that amount whilst working, selling your services 50% of the time. So let's imagine, I'm just taking easy numbers because they're easy to compute. If you would want $10,000 per month to work a full-time job, in other words, 40 hours per week, roughly, your business model should be allowing you to earn $20,000 working 20 hours per week. Why? First of all, you're not only set, you're not only executing your services. You're also having to spend time selling your services and doing all the other roles, being CEO, CFO, COO, head of human resources, uh, the marketing and the sales and all of that. And that should take about a quarter of your time. So 10 hours a week. That's more than a full day. And that's, that's roughly, roughly what it takes to take more than a full day. If you're spending half your time selling your services or actually doing what, uh, doing what you like doing, doing the therapy or doing the, the um, whatever it might be, you need some time to rest. What's the maximum, maximum number of clients you can have in a day? I know that when I do Cosmo Energy uh, and body therapy, five is too much. Five sessions is much too much. Four is really stretching it. Three is good. I can do two, but depending on the sessions, after one session, I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted. Um, normally, two or three is okay. With three, I can maintain a certain level of quality throughout the day. Beyond four, I can rest and do okay the next day, but I need to rest a lot because four is really tiring. So what's the maximum number you can come up with? And once you have the maximum number, then you start computing. You know, if, hmm, sorry. if I'm doing four sessions a day, how many hours does that leave? It's like between <clears throat> four and six hours of work. So that's, that's also why it's a lot. Whereas three sessions, it's about four and a half hours of work if I do 90 minute sessions or three hours if it's uh, 60 minute sessions. So that's, you know, manageable. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that's roughly the rule of thumb. If you work 20 hours a week, you should be able to earn, if all goes well, roughly double to what you're earning. And why double? Because the double takes into account holidays, sick leave, uh, IT equipment. Remember that when you're buying a laptop and phones, that is your, 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 your work tool, uh, it can take into account travel, training, many, many other things. So that's roughly the rule of thumb. So based upon this, when we change the mindset, we start viewing things really, really differently. It could be that whatever uh, activity you have is, is a hobby. There's nothing wrong with that. Keep it as a hobby. Hobbies are fine. But if you put pressure on a hobby and try to earn a living from it, it might work, but then make sure you've got the right model because otherwise you run the risk of having too much pressure not enjoying it, and especially accepting the wrong clients or not, not knowing who the right clients are. This is very important. Knowing who to turn away is massively important because not all clients are created equal. Some clients value what you bring. They're willing to work with you and engage and you get really good results. And some clients are indecisive they're not sure, they're wishy-washy, they take too much energy, they complain. And these are clients you want to think hard about if you actually want to, 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 to onboard them. And then with the right model, you know how many people you can work with at the same time and how many sessions typically you will be having. Like I see using brief therapy, 10 sessions is usually enough to solve any problem and is quite a bit. We can do a lot of work, a lot of work with 10 sessions. 
I did, uh, I was actually working on recently with somebody who requested pure Cosmo energy and we did eight sessions of 90 minutes and the work we did was just outstanding. It was just really, the results were absolutely remarkable. Um, but that gives you, that gives an idea about building, building the, the business model, building the needs. Um, and these, so what I've just explained now, hopefully you view these as being concepts and tools that you understand, that you can relate to, that, are, that, that mean something to you, and that are manageable. The, the workshop I'm going to do, we'll go much more into detail on similar tools. Uh, and I'm going to share roughly, or I'm going to share pretty much everything I think someone needs if they want to start their own business or they are managing their own business or they are freelancing and they are unsatisfied with, um, they are unsatisfied with the results they're getting. So you could ask, who is, who is the same debt? Well, typically it's aimed at people who are managing the business, who are unsatisfied with the results they're getting. They're frustrated because they don't know what to do about it. Uh, they're frustrated with the, the, because they feel that they have a lack of grasp on what's going on. And yeah, they're, they're really uncertain about what to do about it. And they're worried that if they don't do anything, they might have to go back to employment or they'll have to continue living well below um, uh, actually not being able to afford the, the, the lifestyle that they need in order to be able to to run a holistic business that actually helps people. And also, like I said, if we go back into employment when we should be helping people, what about the people who should be helping? Who takes care of them? Maybe there's enough competition who does. And maybe your services are nothing special. If that's the case, you probably want to know about it. But if it isn't the case, it's up to you to structure a business that is sustainable because the world needs more people who are able to run sustainable businesses to help others. This is about focusing on the client's needs and not focusing on how do we do it. So we structure in the background and then we focus on the client's needs and then we go out and help people. And yeah, if, if we don't do it, then what are people going to do? Where are they going to go? Like wait, who, who will they, who will they, they, they turn towards? And possibly if you work in this field, you've seen multiple uh, practitioners, some are unbelievably good, and others, let's say, leave you less convinced. Well, maybe we need more good people. And maybe that's also going to raise the, the, the bar, and it's going to help more people. Something that breaks my heart is when I, when I hear of people who have been doing work for years, and they're stagnating. It is just, I just think of the investment that they made in terms of time and money and energy. And it seems like such a waste, so unfair, so unfair. Because they've been doing this, they've been willing to, to invest the time, the money and the energy, and they're not getting results. So, you know, what, what can we do? Well, what can we do is if we figure out that we have something that's relevant, then offer that. And if we realize that what we want to offer is not relevant, then at least we know it and we can see, is there anything else that I can offer that is relevant? We get to think creatively. And it's up to us to think creatively and up to us to figure out where the need is. And also learning to sell is also getting feedback from people and really checking what I'm offering. Is it relevant? You know, which is what, uh, what, what I will be doing on, I believe it's Monday. On Monday, I'm having... Yeah, it is Monday. I'm having um, a masterclass about this where I'll be taking questions. And like here, I'm really aiming to share as much valuable content as possible with people. So you walk away, first of all, knowing if the, if the workshop is relevant to you or not. Uh, being able to take questions, being able to challenge, is it going to be relevant? Are, are you, is this going to be helpful for you or not? And does my approach work for you? Maybe it doesn't. There are plenty of approaches out there. Plenty of approaches. There are plenty of people giving similar talks, similar books, um, and such topics. What I've done is I've taken all of the most helpful tools I found, I've condensed it and translated into language that speaks to me. Um, I see often people using more complex language. Sometimes I listen to them and I don't know what they're talking about. Then I realize that actually they're explaining a concept that appears ultra clear to me, but their way of approaching it just really confused me. So I'm figuring, 
whilst business is one of my specialties, if I'm being confused hearing them, what is it like for people who don't know business? Using all of these acronyms, you know, KPIs and uh, uh, smart indicators, usually when you use acronym, uh, acronym, acronyms and um, uh, jargon, it's because we're not really sure of what we're doing, whether we're healing or talking about business. So when it comes to running a sustainable business, it's manageable, it's not that complicated, and it's possible to create a model quite quickly that we find more or less convincing so we can make decisions. Do I want to continue with this or is it going to be a waste of time and money and energy? And then you make a decision. So there we, there we go. I think I've covered quite a few things and it's always funny to be doing it live. I know people are going to be joining and watching the, the, the replay later. It's a different exercise. Um, yeah, so if you have any, any questions, do reach out, uh, reach out to just be, do join us on Monday, Monday, it's a free masterclass. The way I approach masterclasses, incidentally, is even though it's free, uh, the masterclass is using, asking for your time and your attention. So to me, it's a matter of respect to you that I deliver value for your time and your attention. This masterclass will go more into depth about business models, about some of the tools. And then during the workshop, we're going to go much more in depth, uh, talking about the tools, also the psychology, the blockages people have, uh, the reasons why they, they find it difficult to sell or um, reluctant to sell, and also how to sell. I'm gonna share with you the psychological model behind a process that makes selling not only easy and fun, but natural. And it's about having a conversation. And I'll, I'll demonstrate part of this on uh, during the masterclass. We won't have that much time during masterclass. I don't know if it's one hour, or two hours, I'll check. But the masterclass will have, um, my goal is that the masterclass has value, that it gives you, with everything I do, I want it to be tangible, understandable, um, and implementable. If it's too aloof, it's a waste of your time. And it's just creating confusion. And confusion, I might end with this, confusion, whether in sales or marketing, uh, let's put it this way, good marketing doesn't make sales. But bad marketing creates confusion, and confusion kills sales. And it's so important when we're, um, it's so important when we're, we're, we're selling that we're not creating confusion. So a big part of that is listening, asking the right questions knowing how to, not only knowing how to deal with objection, objections, but welcoming objections and figuring out. And it's a bit like being, sales is a bit like being a detective, trying to understand somebody's mindset, point of view, where they're coming at, and just assessing, is this right for you or not? So for me, the masterclass is that, first of all, delivering value for you, making sure I'm respecting your time, and assessing, is the, is the workshop going to be relevant? Now, on another note, because I think I'm running out of time, and it's always more fun to talk when people are, are, are interacting, at least I can see them. Um, so on another, on another note, during this month of July and early August, I'll be giving four workshops with Just Be, because I think it's all, they all sort of link in together. I've agreed with, um, I've agreed with Nabila that I will be making a special offer for the four workshops to encourage people to attend all of them. The special offer is limited because I don't want to take more than probably 12 people in the workshops. So I guess we're going to limit this to about eight people. And the, the offer is the following. The regular price of a workshop is 1200 dirham because it's difficult times. If somebody signs up for the full day of a workshop, it's 900 dirham, but they have the option to go for only the first half and then pay for the second half. So it'd be 600 dirham for each half, so 1,200 uh, in total. If they buy the full day, then it's 900. If they've bought one workshop and they buy a second one, the price decreases. So the total price, I don't remember the, 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 the price we got to, I think it's 1600, so it's 900 for the first, 700 for the second, and so on and so forth. But if someone is convinced before we start the workshops 
and wants to do all four of them, then there's a special price, which is even more discounted. I believe it's 2,500, maybe 2,000 dirham for all four of them. My goal is that everything I do here is affordable, implementable, and really helps people save time and energy and that they become um, as, as motivated and energized as possible. We're going through really difficult times, really hard times. There's a lot of uncertainty. And the, the best thing we can do is have backup plans. Having some idea of a sustainable business or freelancing is an excellent backup plan. The easiest way and quickest way to earn money is to sell services because all it takes is someone to agree and you start working, you start earning money. Finding employment in a difficult economy is really complicated because you have to go through a whole process and find someone who wants to employ you and so on. Understanding how you can bring value to somebody else's life, whether they run a company or whether they're individuals, that is a huge skill set. And whether you sell it in order to be employed, or whether you sell that in order to offer your services as a freelancer, it's the same process pretty much. Then it just then it's just a matter of determining what's the best way to collaborate. This also changes the mindset. And my goal with this, uh, I said the whoop whoop. Thank you, Karina. My goal is really to make uh, to help you not be afraid of selling, be enthused by it, to be able to build a business model that you understand and you own, and to be able to do this in a very limited amount of time because it's not that complicated. It's not that difficult. It's about asking the right questions, finding the answers that are relevant to you, and then you can build this business model and build a business and feel in control of your life. The more in control you are of your business and of the freelancing options or the running your own business options, the easier it is for you to negotiate. So if somebody wants to hire you, for instance, and they're offering you something, and you go, listen, I don't know why you'd accept that. Like, I understand you want to hire me, but I'm earning more money running my business. How does that make sense? All of a sudden, you're changing the dynamic between the two of you, and you're, you're talking equal to equal. And that's a great place to be in when you, are, when you are looking for a job. It's a great place to be in when somebody is threatening to fire you, when you know that you have a backup plan and you don't need the job. Um, it's just a great place to be in. And it's easier not easier, I can debate that. Maybe it's easier to have a backup job lined up, but that can be time dependent. The easiest thing might be to have a business running in the background that's generating cash flow. So if your employer wants to fire you, you can go, yeah, sure, fine. But tell me, how are you going to do X, Y, Z? And that, that changes dynamics a lot. And that's a good place to be in. Um, the tools that I will be sharing are relevant not only to running your business, but also relevant to like I said, negotiating an employment and also negotiating with, uh, with your partner and also to having a better relationship when it comes to money. That's very, very important these days. There'll be another workshop specifically on time, money, and energy. Um, nonetheless, nonetheless, we'll touch a little bit upon that. We'll touch upon the beliefs. Uh, I will be sharing some of the helpful tools for, for selling and especially in this day and age, understanding what selling really is. So in this day and age, when companies find it difficult to generate cash flow, understanding how to generate cash flow and having a process to sell is invaluable. In pretty much any company you approach, incidentally, if you tell them, you know, I could help you earn more money. Let's imagine you'd be convinced I can help you earn more money. Would you tell me you're not interested? Most of them would say, no, actually, if you can help me earn more money, I am interested. Um, that's already giving, giving away a few, a, few, a few of the ways that we use these tools. So all of the tools uh, tried, tested, rooted in psychology and experience. Uh, they work for large businesses, small businesses, and there's no reason why, as a business owner or freelancer, you deserve anything less than the best. And I'd like... At the end of this, I'd like to make sure that you are excited to not only be working in your business, but also running your business, and that you're proud of what you're doing, and that you're offering yourself the same level of respect as uh, as you you believe in and you believe other people um, are owed. 
So there we go in, in short. It's, it's weird with uh, when I'm doing lives and people are popping in and out and I see uh, hi on Instagram. I'm live on Facebook at the same time. That's why I'm sort of going between the different different feeds. Um, and so people pop in and out, so I don't know where they, they get in on the conversation. But I, I recommend you view this video. We post it on Just Bees uh, Facebook. And I will I'll probably find a way to, 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 to post it somewhere. So I recommend you, you have a look. If you have questions, shoot away questions. The full workshop, the, the full workshop, the masterclass, free masterclass is Monday, I believe at 6 p.m. Dubai time, so 4 p.m. European time. And then the first part of the workshop is Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Dubai time. And then the second part is Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Dubai time. It'll be in English. And yeah, I, I recommend you join again on Monday if any of this is of interest. Oh, and also something. If you can think of one person who is either freelancing or running their own business or is thinking of freelancing and running their own business, would you agree to tell them about this masterclass? Uh, in case it helps them, it would be a shame that they don't get that those ideas and that help. Um, you might think of more than one person, but if you think of one person, that's already a, that's already a start. And yeah, if you think of that, would you be willing to do that? Because I think I think having people who are able to become more independent, more free, uh, more in control of the jobs. And actually, even if they, there's another thing that can, that, can, that can be fun. Even for people who are employed, I'd suggest using the, the following mindset. The following mindset is saying, view yourself as being a freelancer who has multiple clients and one client is paying. So if you are a journalist, and I see on Instagram, we have a friend of mine who's a journalist. You have one person paying you, but all of your colleagues are clients. All of your colleagues are clients. They're all asking you to do something for them. And in exchange, they're paying you with gratitude. And they're also showing that your, your work is valuable. Now, you could imagine all of you are just freelancers and you're sort of helping each other out, or you're working for an organization. But if you view your employment job, your employed job, job as being a freelancer, you can use these tools to suddenly think about your career as a career, or rather your, your, your job. Usually it's just a job. But if you manage it professionally, uh, then you can be in a better position to get the raises and promotions you want, to work on the projects you want, to work with the people you want, to put down healthy boundaries, to uh, feel more in control. And that is, that's, that's pretty much life-changing. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll end with, with this. This is funny. Every time I want to end, I see more people popping up on the, the Facebook Live. And it's like, oh, if they joined, I don't want to end because that would be rude. But uh, it might be the same people coming back and forth. Um, I might end with this. So one of my favorite quotes comes from Jung and Adler. It's sort of a misquote. But it's saying, life gives us the opportunity to learn what we should learn again and again and again until either we learn it or we die. And then in the next life, we'll get the same opportunity again. So we might as well learn it now. So with this, I'd say... Learning to manage the professional aspect of your life as an adult independently is one of the biggest, um, the most important tools to be managing your own life as an adult and getting the life that you want from all points of view. So learning these business tools is applicable whether you're employed or a freelancer. And when you learn them, you'll be more in control. You'll probably earn more money you work with nicer colleagues on nicer projects, you'll have much more fun, much, much, much more fun. And this, uh, this workshop aims to give you the most essential tools in only six hours for, and this is incidentally, for a fraction of the cost of what I paid in order to acquire them. Uh, it took me years. It took me a lot, a lot of training. And uh, I could just, I, I could recommend that you go and do exactly the same training, but that would take you weeks, months, and would cost a fortune. So that's why I'm doing this workshop. There we go. Uh, so yeah, business tools for holistic business owners, owners uh, for freelancers, 
how to run a sustainable business, how to run a business that works for you. You could talk about how to run your you know, the pro professional side of your life and the career. Everything is understandable, implementable, is tested, uh, is rooted in, in um, yeah, psychology, has been tested, is manageable, tangible, and understandable. And that's so important. I want you to leave this if you join it. First of all, I'd like you to leave this, this, this live being energized. And for people coming to the masterclass and the workshop, I'd like them to leave feeling energized, in control. And so they're, how do I call it, the BS meter works really well. When people are talking nonsense to them, they can pick up on the fact that it's nonsense and they can, uh, that they feel in control of their careers. It's not, uh, their careers in the business, it's not that complicated. It really, really, really isn't. For those who joined just now, like I said before, the business boils down to something very simple. What you're doing, does it help anyone? If it does help someone, are they willing to pay a price where by computing the number of clients and the price they pay, you can earn a decent living? If you can't, don't live in poverty. Start by getting enough money to do it. And if you can, manage your business in a way where you're doing okay. Incidentally, for my journalist friend, this is really, it's a really interesting phase to be in. I've seen in the US more and more journalists lose their employed jobs because there's less ad revenue, because companies are more reluctant to spend on traditional media. And some of them go freelance and they just set up their own blog and podcast. And they have, um, they have a system where the regular readers, the people who enjoy the content, can contribute. And some, a number of them earn significantly more money that way than when they were employed. And they say, I've got full freedom to write whatever I want, to find my niche. If somewhere in the world I find 10,000 people are willing to give me a dollar a month, that's $10,000, it possibly is more than what a number of journalists earn. You know, if that is possible, then they can sell articles, they can hide for other things. So it can be really interesting to think outside of the box. Employment is one option. It's not the only option. It's not the safest option by no means. When we're employed, we have one client who pays and they, if they decide to stop paying us, what do we do? Go on unemployment? Well, that's an option, but that's limited. And then how do we find other clients or other employers? If we don't know how to do it, unemployment can be unbelievably horrible. And if we do know how to do it, why aren't we doing it? And if we want to know, then where do we learn? Well, where do we learn? Giving this masterclass on Monday and then the workshop on Wednesday for three hours and Saturday on for three hours. So there we go. Thank you everyone very much for joining. If you would like to find out more about me, you can visit my, my webpage, which is worldwideweb.riberson.com. You can also follow me. I'm mainly, I wouldn't say active. I, I use mainly Instagram, fribberson.com. Uh, I haven't been very active. I've been, I'm in the process of, of rebranding, reworking a few, a few things. So that will be updated soon. Uh, I have a podcast that you can listen to. If you look up Frederick Riberson, then you will find that. And yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you soon. And yeah, I'll be back for other workshops. Um, uh, yeah, other workshops, other masterclasses, other topics. Uh, in summary, so next week is the business tools for freelancers and small business owners. That's one of them. The next one, I think I'm doing it on toxic people and behaviors and narcissists. And then I'm doing one on time, money, and energy, how to manage it better. And the last one is condensation of all of my my coaching method the tools understanding it so we can navigate our lives ourself better there we go so thank you very much to everyone and um yeah see you soon <laughs>